So, I mean, change is then, it's happening, but you're still hopeful. And so if we were going to have a hopeful message, because we're not going to get anyone to change their behavior uh, with, a, with a bleak message that, you know, it's all going to end. Where do we start with that hopeful message? Now, where you live, Albert lives in uh, one of the first eco-villages set up in the early 70s? 1971, uh, we got to Tennessee with about 320 hippies uh, in large a school bus caravan coming from uh, San Francisco. So it's called The Farm. Uh, there's a lot of very interesting things coming out of the farm, including Ina May uh, and her um, uh, very progressive midwifery, um, soya production, and even I heard Geiger counters. You're producing Geiger counters that the American military buy? Well, actually, we got into that because in the early days, back in the early 70s, uh, we were living on a per capita income of about $1 per person per day. And on that kind of uh, subsistence, you can't afford long distance phone calls. So a lot of us learned how to use uh, amateur radio. I'm WB4LXJ. Uh, and uh, that gave us the basic knowledge of electronics. So you, you know, in order to get li a license to be able to speak on the shortwave, you have to be able to uh, know some Morse code and to read a circuit diagram. So enough of us learned that kind of electronics that uh, we began to have ideas about things that might be possible with solid state circuitry and computer chips. And we started doing homebrew computers and things. And one of the things we did was we shrank down the size of the old um, Geiger counters that they had in the Second World War that were these big yellow single cell battery devices. Uh, and we shrunk those down to the size of a pack of cigarettes uh, and used solid state circuitry and made them much more sophisticated. Uh, and then we became um, fairly well known as, as one of the quality providers of Geiger counters.